Today, I'm going to go over my entire journey in Albion Online and how I made as much money as I did doing what I was doing at the time, and how I got to where I am today where I am financially comfortable in Albion Online, able to buy, sell, and do any aspect of the game completely solo and not worry about how much things cost. Let's get right into it. So the very first thing that I did in Albion Online, believe it or not, was become a lumberjack. That's right, I didn't do dungeons, I didn't do PvP, I just wanted to chomp trees, and that's what I did. So I got a basic great axe weapon that I did some dungeons with so I could kill mobs. I wore the lumberjacking complete set, uh, gathering gear and all with the pork pie. I eventually got myself uh, a spectral dire boar at some point, and then I would just go out all day, every day, and chop trees. And I did that for three months until I realized that, hey, I could start using journals, and I didn't know what laborers were or how islands worked or any of that stuff. So you can see here the progress of my character's gathering tree. We're going to go to the uh, lumberjacking here. You can see it is the only one that has a border around it at level 74 for tier 4 stuff. Tier 5 is 39 where everything else is pretty much nothing. So you can tell that I chopped a lot of trees. I even tried to do some tree chopping in red zones. But I didn't find that fun, profitable, memorable, uh, or exciting in the least. I didn't find it worthwhile. You can see tier 7 I didn't even touch. I think I chopped like one tier 7 tree or two in my life. And then tier 8, um, still nothing. Never chopped a tier 8 tree ever, not once. Because I don't need to. I don't need to go out in a tier 8 zone. I don't need to risk my gear. There's just no reason for me to ever chop that tier, tier 8 tree, not once. And I did this for quite a while, and it made lots of money. I was able to afford premium very easily. This was, however, back in the day, whenever botting wasn't as bad, and the economy wasn't as slumped. And then what I did was, as I lumberjacked, I'm like, I have all this wood, what am I going to do with it? So I started refining. Okay, so here I am, I've got my journeyman refiner. You can see that tier 4 completely maxed. You go down, tier 5 is maxed. Okay, I even did some tier 6 and tier 7. Uh, I guess I didn't do tier 7 on this character because I eventually learned refining was not worth the money, the focus, or the time investment, okay? But as I did refining, I was like, you know what, also... I'm going to start crafting bows, so I became a bow craftsman, you can see here, uh, you know, bow crafter 100 there, but uh, I didn't get very far in bows, Th this was several months of bow crafting, eventually I learned that the time investment and the travel time to make this work was absolutely not worth it for me, and my character was having his focus split between, uh, you know, focus refining and then focus crafting, and it just wasn't working, I didn't know the game too well at the time. It still made me money for a bit until the market completely collapsed. At this point, I had learned how to do laborers. I had learned how to do Fletcher laborers. So I, that's all I did. I would log in, I would chop trees, fill journals, you know, turn the journals into the laborers, craft bows, turn those journals into the Fletchers. And I was making, you know, quite a lot of millions of silver until the, the economy completely collapsed. And it just wasn't worth doing any of those things at all. From there, I decided I'm going to start going into dungeons so I can get max spec. And at the time, all the Redditors were saying, Oh, Great Axe is the fastest dungeon clearing weapon in the game. The Great Axe, I do 8.3 maps with my Great Axe. And so that's what I did. I would go out into the red and black zones and I would do dungeons and die and lose my sets over and over and over again. And I was just bleeding silver like crazy. I wasn't getting very efficient fame farms. I, I mean, I eventually did spec up the Axe to 100. Um, through red and black zones, but it took so, so long to do, and the travel time, I had no guild, I wasn't fitting in in guilds, I just, it was, an, it was a miserable experience, it's not something that I enjoyed doing, I was literally bamboozled by Reddit posts saying, oh, the best thing to do, use the Great Axe, bro, go to tier 8 dungeons, you'll have a great time, you'll make so much fame, and no, and I, I had a ridiculous, stupid build from Reddit that was like this, like, soldier boots, this doesn't do anything in PvE. This lets you run away, f away from players. Yeah, sure. You have the Stalker jacket. This this thing is crappier than so many other, like, jackets on, on, on that you can use. There's so many better options for just PvE DPS. Guardian helmet, I, again, I don't know why Reddit suggested this, but th uh, this is way back in the day, by the way, okay? And, like, Demon Cape? I mean, come on, we all know if that for Cape is better for dungeons, right? And eventually, I was like, there's gotta be a better way, because this is- I'm not having fun, I'm dying and I'm being slow at dungeons. So I eventually booted up the test realm. 
and then I got to testing every single weapon in the game against enemies at maximum spec at, you know, 8.3 as well, because I wasn't a guy that went out and spent and bought 8.3s at the time, because Reddit was like, oh, you don't need it, and, you know, I wasn't about to throw away 8.3s in the, the red and black zones. Now, also at the time, I want to mention that yellow and blue zones had an IP cap on them, so if you wore 8.3 like I am right now and you went to a yellow zone dungeon, your item power was severely nerfed to the point where you could not speedrun those yellow zone dungeons at all. But I did find out eventually that bolt casters were the single fastest way to kill a boss at the time in the game, at low or no specs. I also learned about how armors worked, like cloth armors would increase your damage, the druid robe specifically had a skill that increased your damage, and after doing t several testing and several mats, I came up with the bolt caster build, in which case, you know, I learned that this is the fastest way to clear mobs, AoE them down at the time in the game with low to no specs. So I started specking that up, of course I had to go to red and black zones because like I said, the yellow zones were IP capped. But lo and behold, at some point SBI took that cap away, and then I realized, holy crap, if I use the best gear possible in a yellow zone, I can clear this thing, I can like one-shot mobs, I can, I can one-shot bosses, I can absolutely speed clear these dungeons. I don't ever lose silver, I don't ever have to worry about gankers, and I can binge watch anime and movies and YouTube and just turn my brain off and farm, 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 farm. And the silver back then and the fame back then, it was pretty good. Like, I was making 1.7 to 3 million silver an hour speedrunning yellow zone dungeons because they weren't, they were overtuned, sure, yeah, I mean, that's how it was back then. And so, you know, <laughs> I was like, wow, this is great. So I became a primarily just a dungeon farmer using this build. And then I was like, we could take this even further beyond because I want to pump up these bolt casters and I want to deal more damage and I want to clear even faster than I currently do. So eventually I maxed out the entire crossbow tree. No, I, I didn't equip other crossbows. I just used combat fame credits. I like, let's go to my crossbow tree right now and you can see it's completely maxed out. Okay, and like what I did was um, I just maxed out the crossbow with combat fame credits, the heavy crossbow, uh, the light crossbow as well, weaving repeater, all of these. I never use these in dungeons. I just max them out so I can pump up and make my bolt casters even stronger than they currently were, and it was totally worth it for clearing the dungeons. And then later I would discover that the light crossbow, when combined with the crypt candle, which my character still does to this day refuses to buy the 8.3 version, may I mean I could totally afford it. And I'm, I've been thinking about it, but like the 6.3 is only 300k, and it, it's slightly weaker than the 8.3, okay? I, I, the thing is I still one-shot mobs. You know, I started testing other armors, and I learned this this bad boy, the Spectre Jacket, when maxed out with max spec and 8.3, you melt mobs. You can just run past them without stopping, and they will die. And this bad boy, this Crypt Candle, buffs the damage. So it turns out that this Light Crossbow, after running thousands of dungeons and spreadsheeting the hell out of it, I learned that this setup right here, actually, let me put these boots on, this setup that I'm wearing right here, was actually 15 seconds faster on average per dungeon, okay? And with this setup, I was able to speed clear dungeons even faster and push over 2 million silver an hour, which is insane. And all of that started going into laborers, which you can kind of see the remnants of laborers here. I can show you my chest. I have all these mercenaries, like, these are tier 8 mercenaries that I've eventually grown, but I have somewhere to like three to 400 more tier 7 mercenaries still in houses, still sitting on, on, on islands to this day. So essentially what I would do is I would log in every day and I would just run dungeons and I would fill hundreds and hundreds of mercenary journals and generalist journals and then I would just grow and sell laborers and I would get silver from the mercenary laborers and look at all these islands, okay? Just so, so many different islands and that's just on this character. I use a different character to turn in the uh, journals so I can keep track of how much silver that the mercenary journals were earning and it was something like... 750,000 silver every single day, and then every single week was 15 million in selling laborers. And this is when I started to realize that there's got to be better money than farming solo dungeons, okay? Like, solo, like farming solo dungeons was good and all, but you still had to go out and do it. And I was like, there's got to be something even further beyond. And so I started investing in farmland. Also, here's the tier 7 laborers, like this is just a house example. Here's a founder certificate showing that I played the game since the start and have the founder skins. I'm not showing you which island or characters I have those skins on because uh, the real life value of the ghost wolf is like $5,000 or something. 
yeah, I'm not ever leaking that online to what character or island that might be on in case I ever get hacked or the game becomes unsecure. So I eventually had tons and tons of personal islands. I spent 100 million silver initially just getting more premiums for alt characters for more islands. And then I just started herb farming. That's just what I did. I would just do crenellated burdock and comfrey. As you can see here on this character, uh, you can see that, uh, well, I'm going to talk about the potions in a minute. Uh, here we go. So I have completely maxed out Burdock on this character. He's at just very cl 99 out of 100 on Comfrey. I actually slept in a few days uh, a few months ago when I was supposed to max this, but it's so close to being maxed. And then I have another character that has these same specs for herb you know, growing. And the reason I did Comfrey and Burdock is because those are the main ingredients for the tier 4 Poison Potion, which you can see here is maxed. And then I have almost level... F I have, yeah, I have level 50 on all the other potions at this point because I wanted to maximize how much focus I spend on poison brewing, but taking these to 100 was kind of out of the budget at the time. And I didn't... I did the calculations later, found... A, it wasn't entirely worth getting everything to 100 due to the bench costs and just... Uh, the, the, the market started failing on potions, so I dropped it. But... That's what I did. I became a potion crafter and a herb grower, and that's all I did was make poison potions and sell them every day. I didn't. Need, I stopped. Literally stopped playing the game because I had maximum specs in my in my weapons in my armors. I didn't need to do dungeons anymore. Just logging in and tending to crops and tending to farms and crafting poison potions on several characters. I have like four. I think yeah, four accounts where two of the characters grow herbs, and then that one character on the account is the potion crafter. So I have multiple potion crafters completely maxed out. And at that point, I had hundreds and hundreds and millions of silver, and it was getting pretty crazy, so I started investing heavily into skins, at which point I learned that I had a lot of retro and very valuable skins that I could just sell, and that's that took me from hundreds of millions of silver to billions of silver. Which, um, for those that don't know, like, having some of the really old, um, skins that you got through, uh, the referral code. Like, if I referred someone on, like, the first week of the game, I would get a Ghost Wolf skin. Only one, though. Um, but there was a lot of those older skins that sold so well. Uh, and then speaking of skins, you should always hold on to skins. Now, I have a, a whole separate chest and island completely full of old skins that I'm just letting marinate for years. Okay, but like here's an example. Like uh, I'll tell you right now that the fawns, the stags, the horses, and the oxes are not your money makers. They're okay to have, and they will grow in value over time. But the real value are wolves and cat skins. Okay, but another thing too that I've invested in, which was a transport mammoth. At the time, I bought this for sixty million. It's one hundred and seventy-two million now, and that was like I think a year and a half ago or two years ago. I'm not sure when I bought it. Time has been flying quite quite quickly. So, uh, I basically became a farmer that also invested his, his earnings, okay? And then after that, I started to dabble, at least on this character, on just maxing specs on other weapons. So, I really like solo clearing group dungeons, so what did I do? I went to the Warlock class and I maxed that sucker out, which was rather recent. I did that this year on this character, just because... I had the money and the resources to far fame farm incredibly quickly. I I was a, in 24 hours. I had all of these maxed out by just running tier five static dungeons using an 8.3 satchel and having auto respect turned on using a great axe build. So yes, that old great axe build that I trashed earlier in the video, it turned out to be pretty handy for getting, uh, you know, max curse staff. And then with the max curse staff, this allows me to run a really crappy 4.1. Or flat 4 build and I can just run out into the black zone with a literal suicide set as pictured here and just dumpster other people of similar or higher IP at no cost like this build is like under 30,000 silver like this weapon alone that this guy lost was 124,000 <laughs> okay and the rest of his stuff not worth so much um, but I can absolutely go out and just demolish a player okay um, I wish I had a screenshot ready, but it's a friend of mine that used to play. He also did YouTube on this game. Powerful Noun! Toxic AF. And he has... There's a picture of him in, in like, Flat 5, Curse Staff, killing a full 8.3 Dagger user. And this was back in the day when you could Faction Flag, and Faction Flagging was full loot mode. Which, sadly, is not anymore. 
But uh, fun times, that's, you know, so at this point now, it's just all about maxing random funds for funsy stuff on, at least on this character. I, again, at this point, I have 20 characters that I play uh, and premium up. The reason I don't have premium on this character is because the rewards suck and this, I don't need to do any farming. I literally have a chest full of stuff I need to make potions out of whenever the market recovers. Th that's just how the game is. That's just how my progression has been. I've also, just for funsies, taken this character to tier 8 skinning, uh, just to, so I can have skinning and wood cutting, you know, maxed out as well. And at some point, as this character gains more learning points and I get bored, I'm probably going to max out Quarrier, which is the stone, stone harvesting one. Absolutely, completely worth this, but I'm doing it for the memes anyway. Uh, you can see that there used to be laborers in here as well. Uh, again, I don't use the laborers anymore. I don't grow laborers anymore. I don't even farm my land much anymore, if ever. Um, at this point, the skins and all of the work before that, all of the, you know, doing laborers every day, doing farm work every day has gotten me so much silver that I can just piss it away doing whatever I want. And what I don't want to do is give it away to people that, you know, gang up on me in the blank zone. I, I would rather, you know, piss it away doing something like fame farming with auto respec on than give it away to a player who's using the power of friendship at, for an advantage against me. But yeah, that's that's just, uh, that's one way to get super rich and wealthy in Albion is just pick a path, specialize in it, max it out. If you Here's the, the ultimate tip and trick for getting rich in Albion online, guys is you need to find what you like to do for long periods of time. If you if you can run dungeons for 12 to 19 hours a day, it's going to make you silver. It may not be the best silver method in the game, but if you can consistently have fun doing it all day, every day, then it will be your main method for silver acquisition, okay? Whereas for me, I can log in and do 8 hours of farming. Not anymore, I just don't see the need for it. But back in the day, yeah, and then back in the day, I, I could gather for 8 to 12 hours a day, just chopping trees all day long. Now it's, uh, I do it for 30 minutes, I'm sick of it, you know? I do 30 minutes of farming, I'm sick of it, okay? I do 30 minutes of a dungeon, I'm done for the day, right? So, uh, but at this point, you know, I, I could basically go in the game and do just about anything I want as a solo player. Yeah, the, the group activities are still gate-kept through, you know, over-controlling discords and, you know, harsh community standards and all that kind of stuff, but as far as solo play goes, it's pretty much completed, all right? With that said, guys, I'm Soul Benji. Thanks for watching. As always, be a bro, stay swole. I make sure, uh, make sure to, you're subscribed because I make videos every single day on this channel, all right? I read every single comment, too, um, so leave a comment if you feel like it. I'll read it. I may not reply to it, but I do read all of them. Thank you so much. Uh, if you want to help me out financially, click that thanks button, and uh, you can also click the join button to become a channel member. I've got some pretty cool uh, Albion videos on there, like uh, my favorite corrupted dungeon build that I think is too good to share to the public. I've got uh, a very quick method to make 500,000 silver with uh, focus alts. Like if you have 30,000 focus on an alt you don't play, that's an easy 500,000 you're sitting on, and it only takes a few minutes, so... Um, again, just, just videos like that, how to be a YouTuber, lots of cool stuff. Check out the pinned comment in the description with to see the playlist, and if any of those videos interest you, feel free to become a channel member. I'm also in the process of helping my six-month-plus channel members get a video game exploit up for crafting. It's a developer oversight, it's a glitch in the system, and I want to make sure I tell them first, but I am waiting on three gifted games. Um... <laughs> Uh, check out, I, I made a video where I spent an entire month crafting and show that whole process and the profit that you make from it. Also, um, at, uh, like, I, ha I have crafting alts with maximum chef skills. They can cook everything in the game at 100. This character obviously can't, but I do have those characters, and that's what that video is about. One entire month of what it's like to be a max level chef, the profits you could expect. It it's a great video, and um, there is a bounty in it for the exploit that I know for crafting. Yes, it is an exploit because it is a clever use of game mechanics. It's a developer oversight. With that said, I will see you in tomorrow's video. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Take care.